Today's March 192nd of the year 2020. And it finally came, the SK Hynix Gold P31 SSD. There's a little bit of a kerfuffle. Uh, SK Hynix was going to send one of these, but to review, you know, like a review sample. They did not. I got this one from Amazon. You can learn more about that in my previous video, but basically it was, how much money do you want? Zero, obviously. And definitely don't compare to Corsair and A-Data. So, I like the packaging. Biodegradable packaging. Yeah, that's a lot better than Samsung. Samsung uses, you know, this plastic that's going to be here for 100,000 years. Some archaeologist somewhere is going to be excavating it and they're going to be like, this computer, you know, the, the, the SSD packaging evaporated, but this other computer is fine. It's paper, basically. Bio oh, it's even biodegradable packaging, like the plastic. This is probably that plastic that breaks down. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is the... Uh, the plant material that uh, breaks down in water. I was peeling the sticker for a second there because a lot of the time the sticker could also be a heat sink. Yeah, you can pay extra and have a copper foil embedded in your sticker and that actually works well as a little bit of a heat sink for these things. That wasn't the case though. At least it doesn't feel like that's the case. Quickly Robin, to the Aqua. This is the computer that we're using for a lot of our testing. It's the ASRock Aqua. It's got a Z490 chipset. It's water cooled. It's overclocked to 5.3 gigahertz. It's a 10900K processor. This thing is crazy fast. For our standard test suite, we're using things like PC Mark, which is uh, pretty good for doing you know desktop and productivity testing. We also use Crystal Disk Mark for uh, doing performance testing there. The really exciting thing about this SSD is that it's its own controller. So SK Hynix has created their own controller, which is different in the market. SK Hynix also has a lot of OEM customers. So like when you buy a laptop, it will probably come with an SK Hynix SSD, or there's a good chance it could come with an SK Hynix SSD because SK Hynix is a huge manufacturer. But this is 144 layers, it's quad level cells. So, you know, four bits per cell. Uh, and the microcontroller here has some really interesting innovations on paper. But it's somewhat unusual for SK Hynix to be marketing these in the retail space. I think they're a little bit worried about that in terms of the performance and how things stack up in the market and, and that kind of thing. All right, so we've got our gold P31 SSD and the results are in. We've done grueling wear level testing. I've written to this drive 250 times over. Uh, a little more than that, actually. So the deal with this 144 level, uh, 100, or 144 layer uh, flash cell stuff is that it should enable SK Hynix to have a better price point or a better profit margin than other people in the flash industry because they're sort of first to do that. They also have their own in-house controller. So again, better margins for SK Hynix. If we do the PC Mark test, like if I show you the PC Mark tests here, and we do the test at the beginning and then we do the test like when it's a brand new fresh drive and we do the test again after the drive starting to wear, the performance characteristics are not necessarily the same. Same with as the drive fills. When you fill up the drive, the performance goes down. Well, you know, it's especially true on like the Corsair MP600 Gen 4 PCIe SSD. This was the one terabyte model. As it fills up, it uses the free space kind of as a single level cell cache because at single, when you operate flash memory in single level cells, uh, in single level mode, it will hold one fourth of the information, but it's a lot faster. And so as the drive fills up, you have less and less space to use as buffer. So I filled this drive up about 250 times and did the drive performance consistency test. This score from PC Mark, it's not a good score. It's not a great score. It's not a terrible score. It's it's okay. It's not not great. It's not terrible. It's a uh, it's actually a little worse than the MP600 unless your MP600 has a lot of wear on it, uh, and it's quite a bit worse than say the A Data um, SX8200. This is actually the the Gamex S10. This is an older one. Just pretend this is the SX8200. I've only got one of those, and it's in another system, and I don't, I don't want to get it. But the A Data. Uh, SSD had a pretty good showing for performance consistency in the PC Mark 10 benchmark. And that's about what I expected. Now in terms of power usage, uh, there's a full review at Anantech. You should check that out because they did a way more in-depth test than I did. I think they were in the same boat that I am. And so 
you know, I can confirm that their test is basically consistent with my test in terms of all of the stuff that I did. I couldn't measure power usage directly, but another indicator of power usage is how hot the darn thing gets. And so I used the FLIR and I monitored as I was running this thing for 10, 15, 20 hours. I did all this testing on the ASRock Aqua, which is a really high end Z490 system because good lord, it's fast. And running through the benchmarks and running through the heat, I saw a peak of about 71, 72 degrees C, and it's very clearly on the controller part, not the flash memory part, but that's kind of shockingly low. I mean, our PCI Express 4 SSD here has to have this giant heat sink, which is literally bigger than the drive itself. Even the, S the ADATA SX8200, which is not PCI Express 4, runs quite a bit hotter. So in terms of power usage, laptop battery life, I did throw it in a laptop and I did do some informal testing. And for a laptop that normally gets about 10 hours of battery life, I could get an extra 30, 45 minutes as long as I was doing disc heavy, disc intense stuff with the screen brightness turned all the way down. So it does seem, and that's versus a Samsung 960 Pro. So seems like the power usage is quite a bit lower, confirmed, just between, between heat production and laptop battery life. So yes, I would actually recommend the Hynix Gold P31 for laptop use. The performance isn't the best, the endurance is, isn't the best, but it is fast enough and it has enough endurance. I don't think it's gonna be an unreliable product. And the fact that you have power savings really is incredible. But you know, if you want a second opinion, also check out the Anantech article. They came to pretty much the same conclusion. They got theirs out a little faster than I did. You know, don't hold that against me. I had to jump through some hoops. But overall, it's a really impressive showing from SK Hynix. Now there is something weird going on in some of the benchmarks because if I use a test like FIO and I have zero filled files, uh, you know, it runs and performs about like you'd expect. But if I use a highly compressible file that's not filled with zeros, it's faster. So I think the controller must be doing some type of compression or some type of creative interpretation of what you're doing because even after doing wire leveling, um, the, the latency was still a pretty consistent 60 microseconds. So the controller on this drive is very sophisticated. It is compared to other controllers in the market and what they're doing. And so while it's not the fastest controller in the market, I think that it's trying to optimize for speed and efficiency and, you know, to sort of tick all the boxes. SK Hynix is used and is sold by OEM, so don't think of it as a first generation product. This is really them taking all the special sauce that they've done, working for OEMs, big laptop makers, bundling it with laptops and sort of pouring that into a commercial product and saying here our engineers are doing something nobody else is doing in the market what do you think of the product and it is actually a genuinely very interesting product and what they're doing with the controller i like that i like seeing that innovation i've always you know i've been saying for the past few months i think flash memory is ripe for innovation because most of the controllers and most of the stuff out there is rock dumb stupid and if we want better speed and better latency and better reliability, we're gonna have to mix storage mediums, we're gonna have to mix algorithmic strategies. And SK Hynix, their engineers, they know what they're doing. This is, this is a genuinely good product. So I'm not sure why there was shenanigans in the other, you know, that's covered in another video. But overall, it is actually a good product. I would recommend it for laptops. Desktop use is probably also okay, but it's gonna come down to that price performance. There are better drives at a better price in the market. So, you know, it's just gonna come down to price in your market and where you are and what you want. Is it worth paying the premium for a laptop? I think so. Is it worth paying the premium for a desktop? No, I don't think so. So it just depends on what you wanna use it for. I'm Wendell, this is Level One, I'm signing up. I'll see you later.